All right, last time I looked at this, we were waiting for the FileZilla app to install, or maybe we'd just seen it install. But either way, it was not what I was hoping for because, well, what happened was it was silent. It installed the app, but it was completely silent to the end user. Now that's great, actually. That's probably is what I want most of the time. But the thing I was hoping at that point would happen would be to see the toast notification, the pop-up that the app was ready to install and that I could defer if I wanted to. It took me a couple of minutes to figure out what, what I'd done wrong and where I went wrong. And that is, of course, Service UI. Let's look. Because PSEDT doesn't include Service UI by default, it seems. So when you go to the PSEDT website and look in the examples and then Service UI, you get this information. So the toolkit will launch silently by default and if you need to interact with the user as in Intune is running that application in the system context it can't interact with the user in the system context because the user can't see stuff that's happening in the system context so we need some kind of thing to fix that and one of the ways to get around that is a little hack really it's called the service ui .exe and that is a thing built into the microsoft deployment toolkit a long long time ago that you can use to interact with users even though you're running a system and that's what psadt uses to do this interaction with the users and so we're going to use that and if you look at what it says it, by default it'll run silently if explorer is not running and otherwise it will show an interface to the user and all we need to do is install MDT which I've done I just grabbed that uh, installer from here and then copy out the service UI from Microsoft Deployment Toolkit's templates to distribution tools I'll show you that actually uh, so it is in Deployment Toolkit templates distribution tools and then we have x64 and a service ui in here now all you need to do is take that out and call it underscore service ui underscore x64.exe exactly the same in the x86 and so once you've got those you put them in the root of the toolkit so that is not there at all it is in my psdt folder here there it is there. So I've put them in the root of the toolkit. The thing I haven't yet done is also put in invoke service UI, which is this script here. It says um, place them with this script in the root of the toolkit next to this. Now, that means you've got to download this script. So this doesn't come included in the package. You need to grab it. So we'll just grab invoke service UI PS1, download that. It could harm your device. That's good to know. I hope it doesn't. I'm going to grab this and put it in my folder where it tells me next to invoke app deploy toolkit. So now, when I'm running this application in Intune, I'm going to be calling invoke service UI, not invoke app deploy toolkit. And then it will run some different things. So Let's go and try that. Before we do though, we do need to package all this up into another Intune win. So I'm gonna to go to my, uh, where was it? Here, I'm just gonna run this again. So it's gonna be Intune win app util. I'm gonna grab the folder, the setup file, and the output folder, overwrite it, not going to do a catalog and see that this works doesn't take too long normally super okay good so now we're going to choose that folder here and there is the new one ready to go so i just need to upload that and build it all again but it's fine go to here and i have deleted the old one you can see i've only got the three 691, it was 3692 we were deploying earlier on, I've deleted the old one, we'll choose create and we'll grab a new Win32 app, I'm going to grab the output one, 
which is in C PS EDT output, there it is. Okay, now it's going to be FileZilla FileZilla. I appreciate the publisher isn't actually FileZilla, but I really don't care at this point. And it is version 3.692 and we are going to grab the logo just because I happen to have it in the clipboard that I just grabbed so that's really quick to do and I'll choose next and the install command so this is um, let's go back to service UI docs it says you might want to do I don't want to do the process name I actually just want to do that don't I so we're going to grab this put that there so it's going to run PowerShell and do execution policy bypass I expect yeah no profile file is invoke service UI PS1 deployment type is install allow reboot pass through okay so I'm gonna do that I'm gonna do the same with uninstall and the rest of it is good I'll leave the requirements as nice and simple Detection rules again are oh, what was it? It was it was the installed version of FileZilla, wasn't it? Just grab that location. It was FileZilla.exe. Not even sure it's got a. I doubt it matters whether it's got a capital or not, it doesn't have capitals, but just to make it consistent. Okay. Detection method is file folder exists. Choose OK. And next. 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 And I'm going to make it available for enrolled devices. And add all devices. Because that'll make it easier to test. I'll be able to choose where it installs rather than have to wait and so I'll just choose next and create now the slight difference is if you were using allow deferrals you probably wouldn't allow a user to choose when it installed like the whole point of a deferral is that it's going to install regardless of whether the user is happy with it and the user gets a chance to opt out once or twice or three times or a few times that doesn't make sense when you're using available. So the only reason I'm using available right now is to test it, but normally you would make it required and then the deferrals will give that user the choice because otherwise it needs to install. So it'll give us a few minutes to upload and then I'm going to head over back to my cloud PC. Uh, actually, it's not a cloud PC. It's, it's a Azure hosted VM and we'll see that it works. Hopefully. Let's see. Okay, after a little while, it is now ready to go. So what we're expecting is that the user wouldn't normally have to go in here and choose install because that wouldn't make any sense normally. I mean, if you want the user to make to, to be able to do that, that's absolutely fine. That will work, obviously, as well. But the thing I'm testing right now is whether the user interface for referrals works. And so in that use case, we normally wouldn't make it available, we would make it required, as I just said. Anyway, I will choose install. And what I'm hoping is that it will remove the user interface here, it will just close all the other stuff down and bring up that toast notification for me to tell me that I can install it or defer. Let's see. Normally it doesn't take too long for that to kick in. It is downloading the app as well, obviously, onto this VM. So maybe that'll take a little while and then extracting and doing the stuff that it does, but let's see how long it takes. Okay, to close that down, I don't see a pop-up yet. There it is. Took a few seconds, uh, but it does say FileZilla Project FileZilla, and interestingly, I didn't call it FileZilla Project. That must be... I did call it FileZilla Project in the PSADT config, not in the Intune config. Anyway, that's the information we get. I don't get a logo here, I get the PSADT logo. I think that's by design. I think they purposefully have made it that it does show the PSADT logo only and you can't white 
label it anymore. Please select install to continue or defer. Now if I choose defer, what that will do is decrement that counter. It says three remaining. I'll choose defer and it will fail this install, which means it will tell Intune that the installation failed. And that's fine because Intune retries, right? It'll, it'll try again at some point. Now in this case, I'm really hoping it will time out soon-ish. There we go, so it's failed. And then the retry button in this case isn't lighting up, so I can't retry it, but if it wasn't an available app, it would automatically retry in around a day or so, maybe eight hours. Let me just see if I can get this to show me the retry button. I might not be able to, I've not tried a available app retry before. Uh, we get the retry button here so I can choose retry. Now what I'm hoping is that that count has gone down from three to two. So what we'll see is it closes down this company portal application or any application that's open and just brings it back to the desktop and then shows the user the toast notification. And that, as you can imagine, is the safest way to do it because otherwise users might not notice the toast notification it's pretty big but they might not notice it and there you go it's decremented that so it's now down to two and the user can obviously choose to defer it again until it gets to zero and then they have to install it the only button that will be there is the install button anyway i'll choose install we get the nice user interface here remember it's using that service ui to present this user interface but in the background exactly the same stuff is going on it's still doing that silent install that we configured through psadt after a little while, it says that install worked, congrats. Exactly what we defined in that PSEDT config. Okay, so if I choose OK, it says it's installed successfully. Now, I think I allowed available uninstall. Maybe I didn't allow available uninstall, actually. So I won't be able to test the uninstall at this point. Let me just double check whether I have allowed it to be uninstalled i haven't okay so i can't remove it i can't do the uninstall test but at least the install works and show the user interface and that was the idea i wanted to show that we could use service ui to fix the problem that we can't uh, display a user interface when running a system and that's been the case for forever even since before intune you know, sccm had that problem as well and fixed it a slightly different way but had that problem um this isn't an issue in the next version of PSADT that they're about to release in two or three weeks' time. So I'm going to try that and see what happened with Service UI not being available because it's going to be handled in a slightly different way. Let's, um, let's see how that goes. But for now, I think I've fully tested the end-to-end -end of installing an application um, with PSADT. Uh, next, I'm going to be diving into it a little bit deeper. See you next time.